Welcome back, everyone. We're now going to look at two sorting techniques that involve recursion. I'll do one of them in this video and do the second one in another video. The one we're going to look at in this video is called a merge sort. Here's how that works. As you can see, it is a recursive sorting algorithm. What you're going to do here is you're going to divide an array, whatever you're given. First, you divide it into two subarrays. To be specific, you're going to divide it into a left half and a right half. And then once you get those two subarrays, your left half and your right half, you take each one of those and divide them into two more. So you keep dividing arrays into two subarrays, left half and right half. And you keep doing it until all your subarrays have just one element. This is the key thing. Keep dividing them until all your subarrays have one element. And then once you get it there, these are merged into a newly sorted array. So let me show you a picture of what that looks like. So here is your original array that you start with. Okay. Now, as you can see, the length of that array, of this array, is seven. There are seven elements. The way you split it in two is you take the length and you do integer division on it. In Python, that is two forward slashes. Integer division divided by two. 7 divided by 2 in integer division gives you a 3. And as you can see, here's index 0, 1, 2, and 3. So right there, here is your left half in blue. Here is your right half in red. You need to use slicing to create two brand new arrays. But then once that is done, you keep doing this. Notice now this array, my current left array, that gets split into two subarrays. So does the, the current right array. It gets split into two more. And you keep on splitting until now you get to this line where everything, every array has only one element. If an array only has one element, then by definition, it is sorted. And you really only want to merge arrays when they are sorted. So what we do now is, once we get to this point where everything, every array has one element, now we're going to take pairs of these at a time and merge them in the right order. So see, we take the 8 and the 0. That becomes one array in order, the 0 and the 8. Similarly, then we take the two arrays that have three and negative one and merge those into an array with one, negative one first and three second. It's now sorted. Do the same thing over here. Five and the seven were already sorted and the two only has one element. But now you're gonna merge those into this. And the 5, 7, and the 2 get merged into this. And finally, this gets merged into this. So really, the main recursive part of this, I think, would be in your actual merge sort function. The recursive part is the splitting of the arrays. You keep splitting the arrays until you get all the arrays with one element. That's your base case in the recursion, having one element in all the arrays. So I've, I'm not going to show you all the code to do this, but I will give you this. Most examples I've seen have the, a, a merge sort function where that is the, where the recursive call is happening. The merge sort function is recursively calling itself. And then there's a second function to add, do the actual merging. Once you get all the arrays of one element, now call another function to merge everything back into one sorted array. Let me show you this. Okay. This is all comments. It's not code. I'm sorry. But here is, suppose you have, this is your list that you want to sort. 
and I've defined a method called, I'm sorry, a function called merge sort. Notice I have a merge sort function, which has one parameter being a list, and I have a function called merge, which has two parameters, two lists. Let me just highlight what I went through here. I'm Hopefully this will make things kind of clear, but it'll be interesting to work through anyway. So as we, as we said, the, the goal of the merge sort function is to divide the parameter in half until we get less of length one. So here's the way you approach this. If the length of the parameter is, a, is one, if it is of one element, return it. But if it's not, do this. First, find the index of the middle element of the list. You divide the length by two using integer division. I showed you how to do that. That'd be length, length of, say, my list. Love my artwork. And then integer division by two. Two forward slashes is integer division. Then use slicing to create a left half and a right half of the list. This is where the recursive call comes in. You slice and you create a left half and a right half. That will involve a recursive call to merge sort. And then eventually, you'll want to call the merge function with two halves, with the two halves, the left and the right, as the parameters. And then it'll just return whatever merge returns. Okay, unlike the non-recursive sorts, non-recursive sorts didn't return anything. It used the original list. Recursive sorts will return a brand new list. So merge and merge sort will actually have return statements. For the merge function, both list parameters need to, must be already sorted. Well, if you initially send both lists with one element, they're sorted. So once you start calling the merge function, both lists you're sending it are going to be sorted. Okay. So the way you do this, so you need to declare an empty list in this function. Using a while loop, compare elements of the two lists starting at index zero. You'll have to go through and compare. This is how you merge the two into one list. So you start index zero in both lists, and then you find the element that's smaller, whichever list it comes from, and you append that element from that list to the list that, that's been declared. After you do that, you must increase the index of the list that the smaller element came from. So if it came from list A, you increase, you increase the index for list A. If it came from list B, you increase the index from list B. Okay. Now, you keep doing this loop as long as your indexes that you're using are, less, are, are each less than the length of these lists. What's going to happen potentially is that you'll run out of elements in one list. Maybe not in the other one. So once that loop ends, what you need to do is now you need to see if, if there are still elements left in either of these two lists. So for each of these two lists, you'll need other loops, probably while loops, to make sure all elements from both lists are appended to the declared list. So you'll probably need a couple more while loops to go through each of the two list parameters to make sure that there are that there's no more elements left. If there are elements left in either one, they need to be appended to the declared list. And when all that's done, you return the declared list. That would go back to the merge sort, which then returns the sorted list. Okay, I realize that may not be the greatest explanation in the world, but without actually showing you the code, this is about the best I came up with. I'll leave these comments up there for just a little bit. So you can get an idea of what's going to happen in each of these two functions. It's not absolutely required that you have like a second function aside from your merge sort function, but I think it's a good idea because there's a lot of code going here and it can get, it's already pretty complex looking as is. So I think splitting, you know, again, the merge sort function, its job is to split the list in half until we get a bunch of lists with one element. It's the merge function that will do the actual merging of putting it all back as a brand new sorted list. So the merge sort will recursively split the original list into lists with one element. And the merge function will take those lists and eventually merge them little by little until we get a brand new sorted list.
That is one way to do a merge sort. If you have any questions, please send me an email at kmuldrow at lbcc.edu.